Hi, my name is Dr. Jalinthia Trotman, and I am the Chief of Pediatric and Adolescent Gynecology within the Mount Sinai Health System. What is a normal versus an irregular period? So normal and irregular periods do vary based on the patient's age. So within the first year after having a period, someone can have a period anywhere from 21 days apart up to 90 days apart. Two years after having a period, that window narrows to about 21 to 60 days apart. And within the third year moving on, you're going really towards 21 to 45 days apart within the six years after having your period. So within that, um, within that time period, a typical period typically lasts three to seven days long. So anyone having a period within that range lasting three to seven days long, needing about seven or less um, sanitary um, pads or tampons per period would be considered normal. So outside of that range, you have various types of irregular types of bleeding. So you have some individuals who may not bleed often enough. So they often may go more than 45 days up to more than 90 days or in excess of that without a menstrual period, which would be considered irregular. Some people have bleeding that is too frequent. That means the first day between one period to the first day between another period could be less than 21 days um, apart. So that would be too frequent. You have other individuals that may have bleeding that lasts too long. So that's bleeding that lasts more than seven days or bleeding that lasts less than three days. So those are, that's the difference between having normal menstrual cycles and having an irregular menstrual cycle. What suggestions do you have to manage someone with menstrual cramps? So first we'll take a step back to discuss menstrual cramping. Cramping with one's period is actually really common and it's a combination of um, a lot of release of some inflammation as well as some muscle contraction. So because of that, many young persons would have cramping affiliated with their period. The act of cramping alone doesn't necessarily deem that something is wrong, but it's when that cramping does become to, in, to impact one's quality of life. So if someone has menstrual cramping, typically starts a day or two before the period, goes within the first couple of days, once your cramping doesn't impact your quality of life, or if you're able to have cramping that, re that resolves with either lifestyle changes or a little bit of pain medication, which we'll speak to, that's okay. But once you have a menstrual cramping that starts to impact your life or doesn't improve with typical management, then those are reasons to take a closer look. So usually what I recommend for anyone having menstrual cramping, the first step is usually to really get a sense of when your cramping starts. So menstrual calendars are really important in that aspect. Oftentimes you're able to kind of predict and say, oh yeah, my period is coming in about a week or so or in a few days, so now I'm getting that discomfort. That's the first step. The second thing is to look at your level of activity and the kind of foods you're eating. Many times if we have um, too, much stew, too much stool, and so kids who are constipated, or if we're not active enough, sometimes that can impact the amount of menstrual cramping you're having as well. Not drinking enough water, not getting enough fiber in, all of those things um, can impact the amount of menstrual cramping we have. So I also talk to families and um, individuals about making sure lifestyle is pretty well grounded. Following that, we then do talk about nice um, different pain management options we have. So some people get relief from heating pads. Um, you know, when they're home, I think that's fine. But for individuals going to school, you may not be able to carry the heating pads with you. So taking non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications is usually our first line step, what we typically recommend. So most often we recommend either Motrin, ibuprofen, Aleve, or Advil. And truly we do recommend taking those before the pain gets bad. So right as you're getting maybe the bloating sensation or a little bit of pain, or if you can anticipate even a day or two before, starting with some gentle pain medication then and taking it consistently during the times of your period can really help to alleviate menstrual cramping. If someone is doing that and doing all the lifestyle things and they're still not getting relief, then we recommend um, seeing a provider. When should I call your office about cramps? So, um, so if someone is taking uh, the pain medication either over the counter or something that is prescribed and your cramping is significantly more either than typical or you're having significant nausea and vomiting that's associated, that's not getting better, you're unable to go to school, um, or you started to actually have pain that's disproportionate from what you typically have. So if the pain is really severe, 
you know, you're unable to walk or something is really unusual. Those are all things that we considered an emergency. So we say call our office, but oftentimes it's not that critical, but we do want young persons to call our office if you're just not finding enough relief, either with over-the-counter medication or the medication regimen that we, that we recommended. Oftentimes what we would do if someone does have menstrual cramping that's disproportionate and it's not resolving with typical pain medication, then as a pediatric and adolescent gynecologist, what we do is we do a little bit more. So often we may get an ultrasound just to make sure that everything, the uterus and the ovaries appear healthy, which most often they do. We also talk about other medications that can help with, with um, helping with cramping, whether that's prescription strength, um, non anti-inflammatory medications, or whether that's going on a hormonal management option, which we most often know as birth control, but we're using it for non-contraceptive options. Oftentimes, a, young, a lot of young people do get a lot of relief and a lot of improvement from including hormonal options into their regimen to help with their menstrual cramping. So altogether, we, you know, we do the ultrasounds, we do the non-steroidals, we do the hormonal management, and most often we're able to get good relief from that. And if we're not, that's when we do discuss or determine whether there's anything else going on that could be contributing to menstrual cramping, such as endometriosis.